tutorial. Now today we want to look at a clinically important you know, aspect as far as the arm and forearm is concerned. We want to look at the cubital fossa. Now remember that the cubital fossa, this is the arm, this is the forearm. The cubital fossa just serves as a transition from the arm to the forearm and it's this triangular depression that we see you know, in front of the elbow. Now, so we are going to look at cubital fossa, the anatomy of cubital. Cubital fossa. Uh, let's just catch out something. Yes. So these are the epicondyles. So we get to know that this is the medial. Yes, we are aware that the medial epicondyle is more prominent, you know, than the lateral epicondyle. And assuming this is the forearm, now what we find is that we've already seen that at the medial supracondylar ridge, medial supracondylar ridge, taking origin from the that side, the Humeral head of the pronator teres takes origin from the side and it sets onto the proximal shaft of the anterior aspect of the radius. This muscle is known as pronator, pronator teres muscle, pronator teres muscle. Now, proximal aspect of the lateral supracondylar ridge you know, gives origin to this mass which goes all the way to insert in the styloid process of the radius this side. Now I'm just interested in the proximal part. Okay, with the this muscle is known as brachioradialis muscle. Brachioradialis. Brachioradialis muscle. Now so we see this structure. Now if you take an imaginary line Connecting these two condyles, an imaginary line connecting these two condyles, the lateral epicondyle and medial epicondyle, then we have this triangular shaped fossa known as cubital fossa. Now, therefore, the base of the cubital fossa is formed by this imaginary line joining these two epicondyles. The lateral margin is formed by the medial border of the brachioradialis muscle. The medial border is formed by the lateral margin of the pronator teres muscle. The apex is formed when the pronator teres is crossed by the brachioradialis muscle. So that is the you know borders that we have. Now let's look at the roof. What forms the roof of the cubital fossa? So when you take it, what happens is that you first find the skin. The skin will be covering this area. So the roof of the cubital fossa is formed by one skin. Two, if you take away skin, you get what we call superficial fascia. This superficial fascia within it. This contains what we call the median cubital vein, which often, you know, is a site for intravenous injections as well as vein puncture, drawing of blood for analysis. Now, this median uh, median cubital vein serves as a connection between what we call basilic basilic vein. Okay, medially and cephalic vein. And cephalic vein laterally. Lateral. Now in addition, we also have what we call the medial and lateral cutaneous, cutaneous nerves of the forearm. Of the forearm. 
medial and lateral cutaneous nerves of the forearm. Now the next one that we find will be the deep fascia. If you have a superficial fascia, you have the deep fascia. Then the fourth one is what we call bicipital aponeurosis. And this aponeurosis you know, is a broad flat you know, form of tendon. So it's actually coming from the biceps tendon, stress in that one. Um, bicepital aponeurosis. Now we've seen the roof. How about you know the floor? What forms the floor? When you take all these and what will be forming the floor, the bed of the cubital fossa. Now there are two muscles which contribute to the floor of the cubital fossa. And these two muscles are medially, we have what we call brachialis muscle, brachialis muscle. And laterally, we have um, uh, what we call the supinator muscle, supinator muscle. Supinator muscle. So these two muscles they contribute to the formation of the floor of the cubital fossa. Now, having seen this, then what are the contents of this cubital fossa? So they are very important contents that you have to know. And simply by this mnemonic MBBI. So just by remembering MBBR or MBBS, you should be able to tell us the content of the cubital fossa. I remember this begins with M. And so remember M for medial. So these structures are arranged from medial to the lateral aspect. And M is for the median nerve. Median nerve. B for you know, brachial arch. There's another B that the biceps. Biceps tendon. You know, biceps brachii tendon. And you know, are for actually the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Of the radial nerve. The radial nerve. So if you see in real time sections, you know, the structure just identify it from medial to lateral, you know, you are going to see those So I do maybe perhaps something like this. You know, those structures, you know, the puzzle structures will be there, but you should be able to locate it from the medial aspect where you have the medial epicondyl to the lateral epicondyl. You know, median nerve. Okay, will be there, brachial action, biceps tendon, and then you have the radial nerve in that order, medial to lateral. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this tutorial. Thank you.